Okay. <laughs> <laughs> right, we're going to bring Jeff Wasley up and then uh, we should set this up because we're going to actually record. Okay. Can be beautiful? Okay, and just slip that in the pocket. We're good there. Well, first off, thank you. That was the most terrifying experience because I've always been the actor, not so much the show of the product. Um, I'll just explain them real quick to give you some sort of uh, perspective. The first one we made back in like 2004, it was a bunch of friends in uh, Idaho. We started a company called Small Potato Films, and this is before everybody and their mother had cannons and was running around making movies left and right. We had no idea what we were doing. 28 days later, it just used the Canon XL1, which made it like the thing to buy. But to make it the thing to buy required all of us to open a credit card because it was that expensive back in the day. And basically all of us, our assignment was to create, each of us make a 10 minute short and each of us had a, a job to do. Mine uh, was to take advantage of production value. So I got a hold of the, the cemetery, the ambulance and all that. So it wasn't really dialogue heavy. And my second assignment in that was to actually get copyrighted music, work with musicians, and actually have them compose music for the movie. So essentially it became a music video. And then, uh, so that, each one of us had homework. Another guy had homework on how to capture sound the best, and how to use mics the best, and how to mic the actors the best. So we each did, did, just did shorts like that to kind of hone the craft, because again, in 2004, Either I was an idiot or I didn't know how to look up Google on how to use sound and all the aesthetic stuff. I didn't know how to edit. We obtained Final Cut 0.2, you know. So that's where the first one came from. And basically the inception of that, long story short, was that last shot where it starts under the bed and works its way up. That was a dream I had when I was in grade school, that exact shot. And I didn't have a plot around it. I knew I wanted that shot in a movie somehow, some way, someday. And we just built a script and a production value around that. And the second one's pretty much easier. That is modern day. Um, that's a bunch of Colorado college students. Wrote a script. Um, I, through my involvement, through money and time and connections, I took it through the roof as far as like an executive producer. And so that's a little teaser about that feature. It'll end up being a feature. And we're basically starting a fundraising campaign. It's done, it's made, it's cut. Um, but we're using the fundraising campaign to distribute it and to get it to festivals. So we don't need money to make it. We've made it. So that's the summary. <laughs> uh, questions now? Any questions? So tell us, you, I know you as an actor. Uh -huh. And also, you as an actor, writer, director. Um, now you're executive producer on Pirates. Tell me what that transition is like going from the <coughs> Primarily maybe in front of the camera, and now you're behind the camera worrying about all kinds of things. Um, I think it probably depends on the person, maybe the personality. I don't think I'm a control freak, but I very gladly take that role as needed. And uh, I slid into it real well. And that was just, it was a, the perfect, uh, kind of the relationship of all of us. There were some people that were kind of passive and chill about it, where they were passive and chill about, they wanted, a, for example, they wanted a horse scene, they couldn't get a horse, so they're like, well, we'll just imply it off camera. They'll, you know, famous, we'll do it off camera and imply it and add a sound effect, and I wouldn't have that. So I wrangled, we closed off Garn of the Gods, we got horse trailers, I got all sorts of connections, we rode the horse in. Waldo Canyon was actually behind us. The Waldo Canyon fire was making us exit that day, so the fire's behind us in some scenes. And so that's just kind of how I took over the executive producers. I just, I was kind of like the Swiss Army knife. If, I would find a way to make it happen. And so I knew it was being on camera in front. The more I did back here, the better we looked up here. So, yeah, Ivan. So I, I've noticed that because we both were focused on the same event before, <laughs> I've noticed that this was made in 2012. So was, did you guys shoot this before we shot the same event before? I think we were wrapping up. We were kind of double dipping. Because of Waldo Canyon, it actually screwed up our continuity. So we had to take about a year and a half off so all the footage wouldn't have burns everywhere. So, so when you guys started this, you sort of had a short feature red kind of thing in mind, which then turned into... Yeah, the director writer started it short, and then it, it blew up. We started writing additional pages of dialogue, and it, and it went way bigger than... Yeah, that, that's sort of between Eddie and I when we started the program. Yeah, he met... Yeah. We're, we're going to do it sort of as a long, short speech Lorraine. Yeah. It the 51-minute mark. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah, so. 
And uh, I'll just point out something that I'm goofy proud of. Um, Kendra pointed it out, the scene, my little baby scene from under the bed. Um, the reason we were so proud of that, not in a bragging way, is, but it was the classic, all of us in independent film, we'll find a way to make a shot work no matter what it takes. And that shot, we didn't know anything about tracking, we didn't know anything about post-production, we didn't know anything about editing. Basically, we actually took our XL1 and duct taped it upside down to a two by four, and it had a guy on this side and a guy on this side holding the two by four, and just made the move. And then so that whole scene was actually shot upside down. The two cameramen were holding the camera, looking at a monitor, making sure my face stayed tight. And that, honestly, it's embarrassing to say, that probably took us a week and a half to realize you can actually change that in that motion setting in Final Cut. To make, <laughs> and and that, was, that bit us in the ass on the, we'll fix it in post. We didn't know how to fix it in post. We didn't have the knowledge or the skill. And that took us, it cost us, so. That's about it. Any questions or statements, comments, concerns? <laughs> yeah. Um, I've said it earlier tonight. If God himself came down and said, make a choice, I'd be like, I want to be Hugh Jackman. No questions. <laughs> um, but I do enjoy making stuff happen behind the camera. It, I do get a lot of enjoyment out of it. But like I said, God made me decide now and today I'd, I'd step from behind the camera in a heartbeat. <laughs> yeah. So, with your networking and stuff, uh, what was the most biggest difficulty you had with finding the thing that you wanted to get to for that sense? Um, like for the first one, I actually, it, we were in a small town in Idaho, so networking was, um, hey, you're that Bosley kid. Um, a lot of people knew me, my dad, I worked for an ambulance company, so it was actually cool because it wasn't like in LA where you have to get a, like a permit just to breathe. So you made it, they're like, oh, we don't know what's going on. This was like I said in 2004 where not everybody, kid and their mother was running around with a camera and light kits. So you could just dazzle them with the BS. And in, at that time in 2004 in a small town, it worked in a heartbeat. Here, it required a little, uh, the newer one required a little like closing off Garden of the Gods. We actually had to do it legitimately because it was a government, it's, you know, it's a US government property. So we actually shut off the road. We actually had to put up, do everything the right way. Get location releases the whole way it's supposed to be done. Yet we still try to find ways around it. Um, so that was a little harder, but it was just, it was still comprised of us, the small, the small filmmaker community. So if, if we didn't have to do it officially, we found unofficial channels and it was just everybody came together. Like the, the girl that owned the horse, she's an actress, you know, and so it just worked out. So it just harder, but not impossible. <laughs> so, yeah. <laughs> um, it was, a, no, it was, it was. <laughs> I don't know. I was actually terrified because we had a generator and a crane running, and that was the day of the Waldo Canyon fire, and I was actually worried we would be blamed because it was literally like one knoll behind us. Um, it was free. It was on a handshake, and we had everything done officially in case we got in trouble. So Joe Blow Park Ranger, I can't remember his name. It was literally something like Skippy. I mean, it was one of those very cliche Park Ranger names. He said, do it, make sure it's official if they ask. And so we did everything official. He signed releases and all that. The guys on shift that day checked. So I'm just glad they never val you know, like vetted us. So it never actually cost us anything. We just made sure we did everything as utmost professionally as possible. I mean, as far as cones, caution tape, signage, um, redirecting traffic, you know, we basically wanted to dazzle people, not in a malicious way, to up the production value of what it looked like was going on for safety and for liability. And everybody, everybody that day was a huge um, extras day and everybody signed waivers. We made photocopies. I mean, we did everything, the whole nine yards, other than probably the government signing those releases. The park rangers did, and we all probably know that that probably wasn't something they had authorization to sign off on, so free. I, I was told, and I, of course I didn't abide that, but I was told, <laughs> it's not surprising, um, that I would need to a, a permit and to pay me $100 or more for a permit to do exactly that. And I just had one person uh, keep an eye out for the police. Yeah, and that's we've all done that. Unless you're using weapons and you know something unsafe, it's there's always a lookout. And uh, we knew a guy who knew a guy, and that guy happened to be a park ranger. And so. Okay, so that was the thing. It was a question of whose hand you should. Yeah, exactly. And again, we didn't start the Waldo Canyon fire. Just make that clear. <laughs> or so you said. Yes, I have footage to prove it, sir. <laughs> Uh, that was a pretty neat uh, opening for your DVD. Uh, what did you offer that? I actually just did that in iDVD. 
Uh, the first one in 2004, that was an iDVD from 2004 on an old Mac G, God, 2, um, something that came with the guy's Mac. And then the, uh, the newer one was also just iDVD. I didn't know what format Ralph needed them in, so I just threw them together on a DVD feature. So I really can't make it sound cooler than that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, IDVD, you know, it definitely gives the illusion of, of, of knowledge. Yeah, so. Is that it? Cool. Thank you guys very much. That was the first time it's been seen, so. Oh, I'll leave it on for you. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir.